Sorry. Sinn Féin uh, are looking on the brink of winning the local elections in Northern Ireland. If they manage to do that, they'll be looking for a border referendum. I put that to the government this morning and they said, that's up to us, we'll decide whether there's a referendum or not. It, even though the people of Northern Ireland democratically voted to have a border referendum with the rest of Ireland uniting the two countries, do you think that Labour would uh, also say totally up to the British government whether or not that goes ahead, or do you think they would acquiesce? Well, look, let's see what happens in the elections tomorrow. Um, I want Northern Ireland to stay part of the United Kingdom. We do, though, need to, 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 to ensure that the Brexit that we have works for the people of Northern Ireland, that we can get goods and services uh, uh, between uh, Great Britain and, and Northern Ireland, and there's that free flow of, of goods. So much more is needed, I think, to persuade the people of, of Northern Ireland that the Brexit deal, that the government secured and said was a good deal for Northern Ireland actually works for the people of Northern Ireland. If we had a Labour government, that would be my focus to ensure that not just that we get Brexit done, that we make Brexit work for the whole of the United Kingdom, including for people in Northern Ireland. Yeah, I understand that, but what about if the people of Northern Ireland decide that actually they don't want to be part of the union anymore? Would a, a, a Labour government stand in the way? Well, I, I don't think that um, the, uh, the results on Thursday uh, tell you anything about what people want in terms of their future relationship with uh, um, the United Kingdom or indeed with um, the Republic of Ireland. Uh, of course, it is a decision for the British government whether there are a referenda of, of these sort, whether it's in Northern Ireland or in Scotland. But look, let's see what happens in the results, not just in Northern Ireland, but in the whole of uh, the United Kingdom uh, yesterday, where people are voting on a huge range of issues and perhaps yeah, most of all about Northern Ireland, what the though, different political parties Let's have stay to offer focused on the cost on what we're of living asking crisis. You about. Let's stay focused on what we're asking you about. I'm asking whether if Sinn Féin won the election and Labour was in power, they would stand in the way of a border referendum, which is what the people of Northern Ireland would have voted that they wanted. Well, what I'm saying, Kay, is that people in Northern Ireland tomorrow are voting on a whole range of uh, issues, uh, not least uh, on the cost of living crisis, which is affecting people right up uh, and down uh, our country, including in Northern Ireland. So I don't think you can make uh, um, a, an implication by how people vote, what they um, want to see in terms of their future relationship with the whole of the United Kingdom. But let's see what happens in the results uh, tomorrow. But we do need to do much more to help people in Northern Ireland to ensure that Brexit works for Northern Ireland and indeed for the rest of the United Kingdom, but also that those crucial issues, because people in Northern Ireland are, like everybody, seeing higher prices in the shops, uh, higher prices for filling up the car with petrol, and perhaps most of all at the moment, those higher gas and electricity uh, bills. And that's why Labour are calling for an emergency budget for the whole of the United Kingdom to have a windfall tax on the huge profits that have being made by North Sea oil and gas companies and use that money to take up to £600 off people's bills. Immediate action now to help okay. with the cost of living crisis. Sure. And we saw yesterday the huge profits being made by BP, um, almost £5 billion in just three months. Okay, this is I'll the get on to that in a sec. Let, I'm just going to try once more. I'll get on to that in a second if I may, Ms Rees. I'm going to try once more. Sinn Féin want a border referendum. If the people of Northern Ireland vote for Sinn Féin, Ergo, they want a border referendum. Would the Labour Party, whether they're in power or not, would you support what the people of Northern Ireland want to achieve with their country? Well, look, let's see what happens in those election results yes, uh, tomorrow. But people vote in elections on a whole range of issues, uh, okay. not just constitutional issues, but I think most pressing of all on the cost of living crisis. OK, windfall tax. We heard this uh, from uh, George Eustace representing the government this morning. Have a quick listen. We've already got a higher rate of tax for those companies in North Sea Oil. It's Are you already saying a... they pay enough tax? Well, it's a corporation tax. It's already 10% higher. Um, we judge that that's the right thing at the moment. We don't want to deter investment um, in the North Sea. Uh, they're a big employer. Um, BP, um, for instance, but already they're contributes... they're saying it wouldn't deter them. But they, would, they would continue to invest even if there was a windfall tax. George Osborne did it, so why will you not do it? Do you well, feel they pay enough tax? Is that what you're I'm saying? I'm sure that, you know, Rishi Sunak will look at these things and keep all of these things under review. 
So there you go. Government think that um, the oil companies pay enough tax for now. I think that George Eustace is totally wrong on this, and I think the government are totally wrong on this. The North Sea oil and gas companies at the moment are making record profits because of the huge increase in gas and oil prices. It is right that we ask them to pay a bit more into the system to help people who are struggling with their gas and electricity bills at the moment, who are paying the price for those record high oil and gas prices. And a windfall tax could be used to take up to £600 off people's gas and electricity bills. And the Chancellor last week said it would be silly to help families now. I think that is deeply insulting to people because people are struggling now. Labour has set out its plans for a windfall tax to spike the hike in national insurance to give people relief with the cost of living crisis right now. The government need to urgently come back with their plans because it is not good enough to sit on the sidelines and say that, you know, people, as George Eustace has said this morning, oh, if people just buy own brand products, uh, they'll, be, um, they'll be OK. People are not OK. People are struggling with those higher prices and it is incumbent on government to act, not to sit on the sidelines. And George Eustace says it will deter investment. You know, even the chief executive of BP says that a windfall tax would not in fa affect one single investment project. So what Absolutely. is it that stops Told the him. government from acting? What's stopping the government? I know you did, know. Kay, but he didn't answer you. He didn't. The Chancellor said I last week I can only do my best. A bit um, like when I'm talking to you, Ms <laughs> Reeves. When was the last time you spoke <laughs> you're, you're to your doing, leader? You're doing a great... Uh, when was the last time you spoke to your leader? I spoke leader? to my leader... I'm, I'm, well, I spoke to him yesterday and I'm seeing him later today. So, okay. you know, Kira and I speak uh, regularly and we're absolutely united okay. in focusing on the cost of living crisis so to help families to and pensioners. You. This is what I want to ask you. How many people were at that event in Durham? Um, were there 30? I don't know how many people were there, but I do know that Durham Police have looked at it. Uh, the Durham Police have looked at it and said that there is no case to answer. So it is a million miles apart from the industrial scale law breaking that we saw at number 10 Downing Street with party after party. And the Metropolitan Police have issued more than 50 fines to Downing Street, including I'd, to the Prime Minister. Let's leave that and to one Chancellor. side. That's so the conversation very I have with the uh, from what government. In but Durham. I want to ask you, Ms. Reeves, if I may. Do you, if there were, because he's been on the telly this morning and he hasn't denied your leader that 30, at least 30 people were at this event. Certainly uh, they spent something like 200 quid on the foods. That's an awful lot of curry, one would suggest. Um, if there were 30 people there, are you confident that every single one of those people that was there should have been there and were working? Well, it was just a few days before last year's local elections, and I know from running my own campaigns in Leeds, where I'm an MP, that we have a number of people in the office on uh, election day, uh, on the phones, out on the doorsteps, uh, and, and people stopped for, to have some food, and then they carried on working. The police, though, have looked at this and said that there is no case to answer, so it is so different from the industrial-scale law-breaking that we saw at Number 10 Downing Street, where the police have investigated and they have issued fines, and also very different from the Prime Minister, who lied, lied and lied again and tried to cover up his lies, uh, both to, uh, uh, to, to, to Parliament and to the public. And that is why these two incidents are yeah. so, so different. Yeah, although, you know, the deputy leader was there and there were a few porky pies going on. Uh, we had to press and press and press until we found out that she was there. I mean... You're going to tell me that wasn't a lie, that was just a mistake. What's the difference? Well, look, I think that when this was first reported to Durham Police last year, uh, the feeling was that, that, uh, that no rules were broken, and that's what Durham Police said. And so, you know, we just moved on. And now the Tories are raking this up again because they're trying to distract from their own law-breaking and, and criminality at Downing Street. I understand why they're doing that, because they want to sling mud and hope that some of it sticks on others. But the Metropolitan Police have been very clear. They've issued already more than 50 fines to the very people who were supposed to be making the laws to keep us all safe. And the Prime Minister does seem to think that it's one rule for everybody else and another for him and those close to him. Yeah, but 
you've got to accept that if the Labour Party is saying that the deputy leader wasn't at this event and then it transpires some months later that actually she was at this event because of investigative journalism, that was found out. It's also transpires that more than £200 was spent on food. Annual leader says that quite possibly more than 30 people were there. You know, what sort of... Oh, and there was also some online quiz type thing that was going on, and none of that was uh, immediately obvious this time last year. Isn't it only fair that Durham Police should look at this again? Well, I'm not going to make operational decisions for the police or suggest what well, they should or shouldn't do, do, but they have already looked at it, Kay. And they, well, they've, they've already looked at it and they've said that there's no case to answer. That is uh, their verdict on uh, the, uh, the, the events that were reported to them. Look, I understand that the, the Tory MPs want to uh, uh, distract and deflect from their own rule-breaking and, and law-breaking, but it's the Prime Minister who has been fined. It's the Prime Minister in his office that have been fined now more than 50 times and uh, probably more to come. Uh, and they were supposed to be making the rules and people feel rightly so very angry that they made huge sacrifices, often not at the birth of, uh, of a new baby, not at the sides of loved ones when they were um, dying, not being able to visit relatives in hospital. People made huge sacrifices to keep others safe and yet we now know because of the fines issued by the Metropolitan Police that Number 10 Downing Street who were responsible for making the laws were not even obeying them themselves.